So, welcome to part two. This is where we actually fit the snorkel to the Gen 4 Jimny. Uh, just a small print at first. This is a UK spec uh, SZ5 Jimny, and the snorkel is a genuine Suzuki uh, Brazilian uh, snorkel imported from Brazil. Um, if your car is different or if the snorkel is different, uh, the fitment may differ. So, as you'd have seen in the part one video, uh, the link is uh, in the top corner of the, the screen now. Um, you get a full instruction manual with this, uh, written in Portuguese, and you saw how uh, you can translate that Portuguese into English. It has lots of nice pictures, uh, so we can just follow those step by step. I'm also fortunate to have the full workshop manual for the Jimny, just for those bits where the uh, guide jumps around a bit and doesn't make a lot of sense. So, the process. Obviously the snorkel fits to the wing. Um, for the Brazilian snorkel you have to take the wing off. Uh, this is because we have to remount the vacuum system. Uh, up inside here is the uh, vacuum chambers and they need moving in order to make way for the snorkel. That's part of the standard build for the kit. So we've got to take the wing off way we do that is to remove the uh, front panel here, this panel here, the trim across the wing and then drop the wing off. So off we go. First we have to remove the wiper arms on both sides. Um, these are held on by a nut underneath these rubber caps. The rubber caps prise off and then we undo the nut to remove the wiper arm. With the wiper arms removed, we now have to remove this front panel, which we do by popping out these little black fittings here and then pulling it slightly forward to disengage it from the fittings at the back. These fittings pop out with a flat bladed screwdriver, so the centre pulls out and then the whole plug comes out like that. To pop this final bit out, protect it to stop it jumping up into the underside of the bonnet, slide the tool under there and give it a little twist and that disconnects the panel there and then we have to do the same the other side. As you pull this off from the front of the car you need to disconnect the washer nozzles also it's a quite a tight fit between here and the bottom of the bonnet so use some foam pads and cloths to protect both this and the bonnet itself so now we're going to remove this side panel there's a bolt there a clip here and one round here and with the one just inside the door With the clip and here undone, these two undone, we now have to lift this off. Okay, it is held together with um, two little hooks underneath here that you need to spring out to spring the panel uh, forward. You can just feel the hooks under there. You just need to. Just gently release it off the hooks. These two hooks here. Next we have to remove this flare here. The way you undo the flare is to pop the clips around the inside. Okay, so there are popping clips here and then there are press studs along here. So we pop the clips and then we pull the press studs. With these studs again, you just insert a screwdriver and pull it out until all of the studs around the wheel arch are done. When you're removing the arch, remember the hidden screw up under the front. And next to the screw is a bolt.
when you're moving the wheel arch, there's a clip at the front. Okay, and you actually have to move the front bumper out of the clip in order to release the, the uh, very front of the wheel arch. We then remove the indicator by squeezing it backwards, springing it out, and removing the clip. We now move the splash protector in the same way as all the other items by popping out the clips. <laughs> There's always one that wants to escape. And then out comes the in a wheel arch liner. Inside the wheel arch here is another piece of plastic which is released from inside the door hinge. Here are the clips in here that you just need to squeeze and release to get this panel out. And out comes that panel. Now we have to undo the bolts holding the wing in. There are a couple under here. Now my instructions don't make any mention of this part, but as the wing is held on by that nut there, we have to remove it. And the way to, re to release this fully is very simple in fact. Just give it a very sharp pull and then you can get to that nut there. Didn't show you the removal of the wing because I didn't have enough hands. But basically under the two bolts there, the bolt there, the bolt there, the bolt there and bolt there. Carefully move it forwards to spring the end of the wing out from the uh, front bumper and then it slides out from here. Of particular interest is the vacuum tank which is here. This is for the locking wheel hubs. Okay, We're going to have to move that down to here as part of the build and here is the air intake under the wing and we're going to have to extend that round here and bring a tube here as part of the fitting of the snorkel. With the wing removed, I sent it over to Jay at Red Metal Fabrications for him to cut the hole in the wing for me. Um, I wasn't brave enough to do it myself. He has kindly sent me these photographs of him cutting the hole. The first stage is obviously to mask off the wing completely, as it's all brand new and shiny and we don't want any damage to occur to the uh, paintwork on the wing. Then using a sharp knife, cut out the template of the removable parts of the template uh, to uh, align them all properly up on the actual wing itself. The template has two types of hole, one of which is obviously the new hole that you're going to cut, the other is a template hole to match up with existing holes in the wing which gives you the uh, way of positioning the template accurately on the wing itself. The instructions then are very vague about which tools to use. So Jay lined up a cross selection of the very best and finest tools that you can use to make holes in bits of metal uh, ready to tackle the job in hand. His favourite tool is this precision adjustment and hole making tool. However, eventually he decided that probably wasn't the best approach. First you pilot drill the holes ready for the hole cutter to uh, tackle the metalwork. Next comes the cutting of the large holes in the wing itself. Uh, to do this uh, you need nerves of steel. Uh, Jay finds this special fluid helps those nerves. All joking aside and of course stone cold sober, it's time to apply the hole cutter. This is just a standard hole cutting saw. Make sure that the teeth are fine enough not to grab or rip at the very thin metal in the wing uh, as it cuts through it. Then using a sander uh, or a uh, precision file, 
uh, you can then finish off the edges of the hole uh, to achieve the desired finish. As you can see, uh, they've done a beautiful job, uh, cut it uh, accurately and cleanly. Uh, very, very pleased with uh, the effort the guys at Red Metal Fabrication have put in on this one. Thanks, guys. And it's back to my own workshop to complete the installation. Next thing is to move this vacuum tank. And to do that, we're going to need to get in and undo the bolts that are behind here. So the way I'm going to do this is just to loosen off the battery, tilt it and undo the three bolts that hold on the vacuum tank. So, undo the battery clamp. It should let us rock the battery forward. With the vacuum tank removed, we can now apply the second template. Um, this is to drill two holes here for the mounting of the vacuum tank. So just cut it out and stick it on. And then according to the instructions we have to remove the plastic panel inside the door. I presume that's because this is where this is going to drill through. So in a similar way to that that you would have seen in the reversing camera and the rear speaker videos. We've now got to remove uh, this piece of plastic here and that one here. It's a bit dark to, to video that one but it's a very simple process and all you need is a, a trim tool just to start to lift the trim. And then we have to do the same with the front bit, but there is a, a little twist uh, connector right up at the top of the front here that I'll have to do. With the plastic panel removed on the inside, we're now going to just drill out these holes here. So the first thing to do is to wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. So, big warning, this is a left hand drive template and I'm fitting it on a right hand drive car. I thought there'd be no issues because it's still fitting on the same side. What I forgot was, was that some of the components are in different places and this template lets me drill through here and immediately behind there is the main wiring loom. I was very lucky. The drill pushed the wiring loom aside and there's just some little score marks in the insulating tape around the wiring loom. So I've got away with it. Okay, if you're doing this, make sure that when you do this, you protect the wiring loom on the inside before drilling the hole. Anyway, I got away with it. Everything's fine. Let's go back on with the story. And then we're just going to use a little needle file just to take the sharp edges off of that. So now I will just finish that off with coat of primer. Now we have to remove the air cleaner inlet tube and its mounting bracket at this end, ready to replace it with the ones that we got in the kit. So here is the existing air intake tube. As mentioned in the earlier video, it's important when selecting a snorkel to check that they have thought of things like drains. The snorkel itself needs a drain uh, so that any rainwater coming in doesn't just flood into the air filter. But equally, you need to block up the existing holes on the uh, air intake. So here are a pair of holes on the Jimny intake. This is on the underside of the intake and the kit provides a blanking plate to fit in here. 
Also at this end we have the original mount. They provided a new one in the kit. Uh, so we take that off and replace that. So I'll do that now. So this is the blanking kit for the air intake. This fits inside the rubber tube. These fit on the outside and are then clamped down by these nuts. After lots of fiddling around you end up with a nicely sealed tube like that. So now we fit it back onto the car. Whilst we're on the subject of drains, there's another drain hole at the back of the air filter box here, uh, which we need to put some silicone in. Simplest way to get to this is just to clip, undo the clips, lift the air filter can open, remove the air filter itself and then there is a tiny hole at the very very back of this con uh, container and just put a blob of silicone there on that to seal up the entire system. So that's the vacuum tank fitted. I won't pretend it was easy because of the uh, studs here are right up in the wiring loom. I managed to get that one done up tight and this one done up tight. Uh, but to be honest with you, I couldn't get that one to catch at all. Okay, but it's in, it's nice and firm. If I was doing this again, I might consider putting that somewhere else in the car rather than using the template from the Brazilian guys because, of course, it isn't meant for this car, that template, it turns out. But I'm sure I could put it somewhere else uh, equally effectively so that the pipe can come along here. Anyway, it's in, it's working, and it's all sorted. So... Next problem, uh, this is a left-hand drive Brazilian kit fitting to a right-hand drive. On the Brazilian cars, the uh, airbag collision sensor is on the other side. So the uh, snorkel manufacturers uses this mounting point for the bracket for the um, air intake. Okay, This is supposed to go here. So what I've done, uh, I've realised that all I need to do is drill out that stud there, like so. Here's another bracket, and I can fit this behind here using the bolt and the stud from the sensor, keeping the sensor in the same place. So, yeah, got round that one. Drill a nice hole, 10 millimeter hole, drill out the stud, and that'll fit over there. With the hole drilled, the stud removed, the sensor and all that fits in underneath there, the bracket fits in there, so now I can go on and fit the um, intake uh, nozzles here. So the upper mounting bracket for the intake goes here. So the intake goes in there. We also fit the um, drain Remember I was talking about how you need to block up drain holes in the existing system, but you also need to provide, every snorkel needs a drain, so if you're making a home-built B&Q one, make sure you're thinking of how to drain it. If you've bought a cheap Chinese one, make sure it's got some sort of drain system in it they don't all have. This has got this drain system here with a flappy valve to let the water drop out, quite a neat little design that just slides on. slides on there and provides a suitable drain point that will automatically drain any water that comes in the top of the snorkel, like so. So now to assemble these hoses together, first of all there's a short piece of hose, short piece of hose in the kit which I slide over the end of the unit and then I put one of these um, uh, clamps around that short bit of hose and around the mounting bracket and we'll tighten this whole lot up to hold this all together here. And with this firmly attached we can now insert the joiner pipe. And we put on 
couple more hose clips. Bearing in mind that any future adjustments of this have to be done from underneath because the wing will be in place, make sure you put it, the hose clip in so that any adjustment can be done from underneath. Okay, now for the big moment, the fitting of the wing. Putting the front wing in place is straightforward. It's just the reverse of taking it apart. Um, what they want you to do is measure the gaps around the uh, edges to check that it's all nicely aligned. But I find that because these have got paint marks on the bolts uh, where uh, they were and they were sprayed into place, in fact it's straightforward to, to just seat the bolts straight back in where they were to get it all lined up. As you can see, J and Red Metal Fabrications have done a beautiful job of cutting the hole and any moment now it's the moment of truth. What does the uh, snorkel look like in place? Got to have a trial fitting haven't we? So a quick test fit. I've yet to fit in the air hose under the wing and I've yet to fit it to the pillar. This is just to see that everything aligns up nicely ready before the next stage which is the um, you've got to glue it with VHB tape uh, and screw it to the uh, upright pillar so just making sure everything's fine before the final cut so to speak. With the top hole drilled and primer and paint put round the hole to stop it rusting I've now pushed in the riv nut and I've also rubbed some sealant around the outside of the riv nut again to make sure that there's a very very little chance of any corrosion occurring here. Earlier on in this video and also in the unboxing video you'd have heard me referring to VHB tape and how that we didn't think you needed uh, to put the bolts through because the VHB tape would hold it. Having opened up the VHB tape to install it I now realise that it's single-sided VHB tape so it's just providing a foam insulation so obviously that's not going to work as a way of uh, sticking the snorkel on however I have got a roll of double-sided VHB tape so I'm going to put the foam bits on where they say and I'm also going to put the uh, VHB tape the double-sided uh, to help particularly around here secure the uh, snorkel to the car uh, one other point to note is that this tape you're going to run it all the way around all of the seams okay all the edges so that's what I'm about to do with with this it is just a matter of unpeeling it For those of you who've never used double-sided VHB tape, the trick here is to obviously stick down the one side that you can. Now when you place the snorkel onto the car, if you'd pulled off the protective tape, then it would just stick in whatever position that you uh, got first. Well, you obviously want a bit of adjustment. So if you leave the protective backing on, but provide tails of the backing tape that stick out, of the side and just secure those so that they don't pop back in whilst you're playing with it you just secure them on the outside then you can pull those tails once it's in position and remove the backing tape so now we offer up the snorkel onto the wing the first bolt goes on under here. This top bolt is of a riv nut style so you need to tighten it up so that the base of it expands locking the whole assembly into the pillar.
I hope you enjoyed this uh, video on installing the snorkel and uh, if you want to see more videos keep watching this channel.